everybody. Today I am going to talk a little bit about how I check my own chicken fecal samples. I have my microscope here with my cover on and I actually keep my microscope in a backpack with a zipper on it because it's very important that you don't get a lot of dust in the lenses. So I'm just going to pull my cover off here and it's already plugged in. This here is the, whoops, that there is the one I use for checking samples right there. I have a Omax scope. I purchased it on Amazon for under $200 if I remember correctly. I'm going to take these protectors off. Now, your scope is probably going to come with two different sizes for the parts that you put in up top where you look through. For fecal samples, I use the larger sizes. Your scope probably will not come with any slides, slide covers, fecal solution, or test tubes, so you want to make sure that you get all those things. This is what I ordered for the fecal float solution. If you look on Amazon, you'll find it's very expensive, so I just googled it and found a supply company that had it much cheaper. I put it in a smaller squirt bottle here, so I don't always have to take out my big heavy jug of it. And I have two plastic test tubes held up by sand in a cup. I have my slides and slide covers here. And I'll admit I'm not good at not getting dust on things, so what I do is I clean off my lenses, slides, and slide covers. With one of these, this came with my eyeglasses. Actually, I just wipe everything off. Now, when I first started doing this, I had one of my friends that are veterinary technicians train me on how to do this. So I'm going to take out the bigger part here and put it in the pieces you look through so that it's all ready. And I did go outside. I got a couple of fresh samples that I'm going to do on here so I don't know what I'm going to find. Um, now if you recently watched my other video on which I was saving some ailing chicks from my local farming store, these are my slide covers, they just come in a little, they are separately, they don't, I haven't seen anywhere that sells the pieces together. Um, if you've seen on my other recent video, I had some chicks in that weren't doing too well. And so I took some tiny little poop samples, put them in the microscope, and I thought I saw parasite worm eggs. And so I went on a Facebook page called The Floaters Club and had some other people look at it, people that are more experienced than I am, and they said it almost looks similar to pollen or something like that. I'll show you here what, it, what, it, what I found. So that looks extremely similar to a parasite worm egg, but if you check out my video called coccidiosis, you'll see that there are differences. There's no distinguishable cell wall on that. And so they were saying maybe it's something in the feed, the chick feed. So this morning what I actually did was I um, put some chick feed in my test tube and sure enough, I saw it again. Guess what else I saw? I saw a bunch of dust mites. So, I'm not gonna lie, it freaked me out. Creepy crawlies, right? So my family spent like a whole day cleaning the house. And darn it, wouldn't you know I found more this morning. So what you're gonna do, first of all, is take your solution and fill it 
about an inch up on the bottom. Now when I first started doing this, I was just taking this solution and squirting it right in the center. I'll admit I don't have a lot of patience, so I was squirting really fast right in the center. Creates a lot of bubbles. So what I do now is I squirt it slowly against the side of the test tube. Works a lot better. Now, this is going to be gross. I apologize. Went outside, I got my samples, put on a stone because I kind of decided last minute that I was going to do this, so I didn't have a cup or anything with me. Now all you really need, at minimum, is a sample that's the size of a pencil eraser. But I like to get a little more in there myself. So I'm just going to pinch off, try to get it from the middle. Now when I take samples from outside, I try not to take any, I'm just putting it in the top here. I try not to take any from like inside the coop where it's going to be really dusty and you're going to have pieces of feathers, you're going to have pieces of wood chips, all sorts of stuff. And the less other things you find on the slide when you look through it, the better it's going to be. So you don't want to go out to your to your uh, chicken run and get a piece that, that's covered in like dirt, all sandy and stuff like that. So, okay, we have the test tubes here. And I actually need one more thing. I'll show you what else I keep in my bag. I have one of these to clean out the test tubes when I'm done. I keep my extra parts and extra slides in my front pocket. And then I have this here. Honestly, I think it's like made to be a kebab skewer. <laughs> but, um, yeah. If you had like a, you know, one of those long wooden toothpicks or something like that. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing everything to the bottom of the test tube. I'm stirring it up. At vet's offices they have a uh, like a little shaker thing. And since all of these, I'm doing two, but since these two poop samples were already on the same stone when I brought them in, I'm not worried about cross-contamination here. They were already sitting next to one another. So, once we have that all mixed up in there, you're going to continue to fill your solution to the top. And again, don't squirt fast in the center. You're going to get a lot of bubbles. I'll show you what bubbles look like under the microscope. All those black circles with the thick black rings around them, those are all bubbles in there. You don't want a lot of that. So you're filling until you get a dome on top. You're almost overfilling, but you don't want it running all over, of course. And then you have to let it sit there for five to ten minutes. Now, at a vet's office, they might just do five minutes, but they'll have that shaker thing where they're stirring it up. I'm not that high tech, I don't have that, so. Anyways, put my solution away and we need to let that sit for 10 minutes. So it's been about 10 minutes. Now the reason you're waiting 10 minutes is because you want all, if there's any parasite eggs or anything, you're waiting for them to float to the top so they stick to your slide cover. Now again, I, I wipe these off gently because these slide covers are super thin. Doing, whoops, doing two samples. Sometimes these stick together, so you want to make sure that you do only have one. Now some people will use 
because these things are expensive, they'll use this twice. They'll put one sample with a cover on one end and then another one over here. Now if you're doing a sample from the same bird, you just want to check it twice, that's fine. I would not personally check two different samples from two different birds on one slide in case some of the liquid seeps into the other one, you wouldn't know which bird you're dealing with. And I do have turkeys and other birds, so sometimes I've done two different kinds of birds samples, so I wouldn't mix those. You carefully put the slide cover on the top of that dome. I give it a couple seconds to let that let anything stick to it. So, then I'm going to grab my slides. Now you don't want to turn your microscope light on until you're absolutely ready to use it because the replacement light bulbs are super crazy expensive. Okay, so We've got that on there. Now, there's two mechanisms here for moving that side to side, up and down to look at the whole thing. And then your focus is gonna be on the back part, on the neck of the microscope. So, I'm gonna look at this real quick, turn my light on. And if I see anything, interesting. I'll put my phone up to there so everybody can see it. I start at the top um, left hand corner and work my way up and down and across. And I'm not gonna check these whole things on video right now because you'll get sick of waiting I'm sure. So far, so good. I'll show you real quick just what regular poo looks like. <laughs> Here, let's try to get this. So lucky for me, I'm not seeing anything suspicious here. I'm not seeing any parasite eggs, which is awesome. Good news for me. I was thinking of deworming my flock because it's getting to be springtime and it's good to get in a routine of deworming in the spring and in the fall. But it looks like I can wait a little bit on that. And actually, since I took so long to do my samples, um the solution is starting to crystallize. You'll actually see little things that look like pieces of salt under a microscope. I'll show you what that looks like, but when you prepare your samples, you want to do them right away because the longer you wait, the more they crystallize. So that's a general rundown of how I use my microscope. When I see things that I'm unsure of, like I said, a good resource is that Facebook page called The Floaters Club. Very knowledgeable people on there, very helpful. And another thing that I've done too that's useful is type into Google or Yahoo chicken par parasite eggs under a microscope and you'll find some good charts under images. So again, I didn't find anything, but next time I do, I'll be sure to video it for you and show you some pictures. Also, you can refer to my coccidiosis video and gain some knowledge about what those parasite eggs look like under a microscope. And I actually, in that video, I kind of draw them out for you so you can see what those look like when you're looking at them. So thanks for watching. Again, be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment.